Okay. I think we are settled. Welcome back to the Utterly Unrelated episodes on Zoom. Yay. Yay. I hope that you're not, like, going to post the video online because I look, like, cozy. <laughs> no, I'm going to do what I normally do. And and um, I don't know if anybody noticed. I was pretty proud of it. Um, I've been using some great, uh, some great pictures in our... Um, <clears throat> YouTube in our YouTube videos. Thank you. Uh, I I don't know if anybody noticed that I snuck a little Tom Hardy post uh, post jujitsu match in the first one because we had talked about I that. Did not you know I only listen on Spotify because oh. I usually either at work or driving to work or driving home from work or you know. <laughs> Here I'm, I've got to show you because it's so cute. Um, and I know I'm not supposed to, I don't know. I'm sure he wouldn't appreciate that I'm saying it's cute, but like, it's cute. Also, I did a Matt Smith. There we go. Can you see him? <laughs> yeah. I, I think that he would understand that it's cute. It's cute, he, right? He seems like a guy who understands that he's cute. I mean, he's making the cute face. It was cute. So I put that in our in our episode where we talked about him. And then this one was in... This week's episode. Oh, I love that. It's great hair. He does uh, have great hair, though. Oh, yeah. I think I did. Oh, yeah. I did one of these for our first one. So, <laughs> yeah, I've just been I've been putting in cute shit. So, yeah, I will continue to do that. I definitely am not looking cute. Um, I disagree. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm all sweaty and kind of like. <laughs> so today we are talking urban legends Ooh, and we're not spooktober. Talking spooktober so we'll do urban legends today and then uh ghost stories next week uh and then we're going to round out the month with a surprise episode it's going to be very spooky um but it's yeah gonna be very creepy. it's going to be very creepy so today we're going to go over we're going to do like we did our cryptid episode and we are each we each have five of our favorite urban legends we're going to talk about today so uh, do you want to kick it off with your number five? Yes. Okay, so I didn't do these in, like, any particular order. Wait, can you see me still? I cannot, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so uh, in no particular order, um, the I don't know if you heard about this one. This one is one that it circulated... I think in like the 70s or 80s, and it, it always comes back around. Um, it's the ankle slicing car thief. What? Okay, so the first time I heard about this, it was, I believe, like in a chain letter or something <laughs> from like the 90s. Oh my uh, that, and this is one that I'm so sure is universal for like everywhere and everyone um, has heard their moms talk about it because females have to collect fears to keep them safe. Of course. Um, but so the ankle size and car thief, the first time I had heard about it, it allegedly, and I use all caps allegedly, was happening at Lloyd Center. Keep oh. in mind, there's like no record of this happening. <laughs> um, but a guy would hide under your car and you would go to like get in your car and they would slice your ankles and either like kill you and steal your car or just regular steal your car. Either way, they like slice your Achilles tendon. Ugh. Ugh, oh I know. my god. Remember yeah. that remember in uh was it I wanna say it was hostile? Where, like, oh my the, god, yes, I remember that and very they, vividly. Oh, oh my god, yeah, and it sounds like Velcro coming unstuck and peeled uh, when he cuts his fucking Achilles tendon. Ugh. Yeah, that <laughs> movie gnarly. was ooh. that scarred me for life. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Like, so I added that to my collection of fears. I think it was one of the first in the collection. Nice. Despite the fact I was like in grade school and I didn't drive, <laughs> I didn't even drive till I was like eighteen. So, <laughs> but yeah, I added that to the collection of years. <laughs> oh my god, that's a gnarly one. Um, 
I have a regional one also. Maybe I'll jump to that one. Do you want to go back and forth or do you want to list your five? Yeah. My five. Okay. So you know what? In honor of the regional one, I'm going to do, I guess, scroll down here. Sorry. The poly bias video game. Have you heard of this one? Not at all. Okay. So according to legend, a video game called poly bias was released for about a month in 1981 in Portland, Oregon. The game was designed by the government to be a psychological experiment. It functioned like a drug and gave its players seizures and nightmares. The government officials would come in and extract information about the player through the arcade machine. Um, though the game was almost not, almost certainly not real, there were a few video game related happenings that probably spurned the legend. Um, so one was the game tempest which did cause a bunch of epileptic seizures and uh motion sickness which like if you're me every fucking video game causes motion sickness um but uh another another sort of accompanying to this urban legend was that the fbi agents did inspect an arcade around the same time um that kind of helped spurn this in portland because there were reports of like backdoor gambling um <laughs> But yeah, so it was the video game that took your free will or soul or whatever. Dude. <laughs> I know. Okay. That's Which, fucking terrifying. That's a, I mean, it's a fun allegory from like Tipper Gore. Oh God, Tipper Gore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still uh, like, I'm a 90s kid holding a grudge, man. <laughs> same. And like, I still think that it's so dope that like, john denver oh. was you remember like during the whole yes like violent the shitty music causes shitty behavior <laughs> um and it's like well i mean most of those serial killers were raised on like the beach boys and shit so i'm not sure about that yeah. um <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, i mean in d snyder he did make that one movie but like i don't know man i thought it was pretty good Dude, um, I, I really liked it. Dave is such a he's such a hater. So we we I went really hate strangely and it was pretty good. <laughs> I thought so too. I thought it was I mean it like scarred. Was me it too close to like Freddy Krueger for him or whatever? Or does he just blanketly hate it? He just blanketly hated it and I can't figure out why. We went to um I I used to do a few things for this magazine in Vancouver called um um oh Aaron. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, I forgot the name of the magazine. Holy shit. Anyway, we used to do we used to do like some freelance video stuff for this magazine up in Vancouver. And so we went to a twisted <laughs> twisted sister show at a casino, kind of on the outskirts of Vancouver. Um I think it was in Coquitlam or something. And uh anyway, so we were like there was like nobody there in the audience. I mean, there were a few people, but not many. And so D. Snyder started talking about between songs. He was talking about how he was writing Strange Land 2. And a silence. Was strange Was it Strange Land? Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Okay. Yeah. He was like, I'm writing Strange Land 2. And a silence fell over the crowd. And Dave, as loud as a fucking barrel chested man can be, was like, <laughs> oh no is that why that movie never came out i can blame dave you know it might be it might be i was like dude what are you doing and he was like Aww. well what i'm like you just killed the dreams of this man and you were like very loudly the only one that went boo and he was like man. he also killed the dreams of me i wanted to see a, a sequel dude i had never seen a movie where a killer had like twice kidnapped the same person and twice sewn their lips shut and you know like it was so traumatizing it was so scary it was so good and he had this it was like, amazing i thought it was awesome and linda cardellini starred in it who was i mean i knew her from freaks and geeks and it was like you got to see her boobies and it was really exciting and it was just like it was a really solid movie and dave just i thought it was really solid too Oh my god, does he hate that movie? It's it's intense. It feels very personal, his hatred for that movie. <laughs> like, I don't know. I would assume, and this is based only upon Dave hates it, I would think that maybe, like, 
Twisted Sister was overplayed on the radio because Dave has an inherent hatred for almost all Canadian artists because, like, he heard them too much growing up. That's true. You know, it's funny because now that he's getting older, he's getting, like, weirdly nostalgic for Canada. So he got his citizenship. And despite his mother's pleas, he he did he gave up his Canadian citizenship. He's not a dual citizen right now. And so That's a bummer. I know. Well, they make you like in the swearing in, they're like, you have to renounce your citizenship and then you have to apply for dual. It's really it's crazy the way they've changed it. But um anyway, so he's getting all like weirdly nostalgic and sad and missing Canadian content. So he's been watching fucking uh corner gas like old oh my god i love corner gas i know it's so weird to walk in the living room and he's just like he's got like a content smile on his face and he's like oh it feels like home (laughs) does he like the cartoon too i don't know that's a good question he said he always hated corner gas when he lived there but that like because it's his only canadian content that he's getting now that's like nostalgic (laughs) he really is enjoying it i was like oh you should watch kim's groceries or something he's like no yes (laughs) no kim's groceries is so good uh, you know and i haven't seen that one either but i really love oh man i loved a lot of canadian shows that we watched they were not bad at all I think that you'll really like Kim's Groceries. I've seen almost all of it. Oh, really? Um, I, yeah, I made it about halfway through the last season, and then I found out what happens at the end, and I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for that kick in the nuts yet. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm I not going to tell you anything. Okay. I thought it was a comedy. Is it not a comedy? No, it is. Oh, okay. It is. It's a heartwarming comedy. Oh, heartwarming. Oh. It's, dude, it's so fucking funny, though, seriously. I'll have to check it out. No, it's really funny. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay. Um, so I there was like so much overlap research that I did for last season when we did cryptids, and there was like a handful of them that I was like, "Is this a cryptid?" Um, but it was an urban legend, and so I can't remember if I researched it for nothing or if i included it but this next one i think is perhaps an overlap black-eyed children (gasps) oh black-eyed children you know what either way i'm glad you're bringing it up again because yeah i have to say when i was researching urban legends i have to take umbrage with the fact that they listed like krampus and nessie yeah for sure as urban legends and they did list bandage man they did yeah he is definitely an urban legend yeah i'm not going to bring that up because i'm very sure that i talked about him last time yes or maybe i just researched him heavily in that one nowhere um (laughs) but no black eyed do black eyed kids it terrifies me because like there's only i think one account of and that all of these are alleged mind you um of somebody i think letting the kid into their car and then the kid freaked him out and he was like nope and just noped out (laughs) um but according to the urban legend um it's usually like two kids sometimes one usually two and they're between the ages of like six and 16 and um they'll have like a hoodie and they always very much insist on being let inside whether it's let inside your car uh, let inside your house, let inside wherever you're at. Okay. And it seems kind of like vampire rules where they can't get in there unless you um, allow them. But the thing is, apparently, like what accompanies them is just a feeling of existential dread, like of nothing's okay, get the fuck out, get the fuck away. Like your f- fight or flight just like gets hyper activated. So I don't know, man. Maybe they can reach into your brain and squeeze your amygdala. I'm not sure, but like, Ooh. it's definitely it, it gives people an unsettling feeling. And according to the legend, if you do let them in, something bad happens. Um, I'm assuming death because there's really other than that one guy who I think had let the kids into his car and then just nope the fuck out. Um, I think that that's the only telling where they were actually let in and the person survived. You know, okay, so do you, so you, do you think they're demons or aliens or ghosts? Demons. 
demons. Yeah, a hundred percent. Me too. Like some people say, like, oh, I think they're aliens, but like, no, this scared me to my core. Thinking that one would just show up on my doorstep one day because they have, you know, they have talked about like where they just show up at your house and they're like, help, I need help. I need to use your phone. Can I come in? <laughs> yeah. And like there it's so it's supposed to be like the way that they speak and the way that they are. Um, and this, I think, is why some people think aliens is because uh, it just doesn't quite sync up. Yeah, You know, their voice will be a few octaves too low. Uh, their mannerisms will be too mature. Like, it's, you know, it just doesn't quite all the way sing up. Yeah. And and then usually their voices will, will get all oddly modulated uh, or very deep. And the dead giveaway is that their eyes are just black. And I'm not talking like, you know, like how DJ's eyes are black. Like, this is like the entirety of their eyes are just black holes. Ooh, yuck. Yeah. yeah terrifying. It would be. And they just, the worst part was you didn't have to do anything to prompt an interaction with them. Like they would just show up. They just target. Um, apparently the more that you talk about them and think about them and research them, it's like a beacon. Oh, so kind of like with skinwalkers, how you're not supposed to yes. say skinwalker. Yeah. Or that one specific box that has a demon in it that I'm not going to say because I I don't know why. I completely believe in it. And I believe that, like, talking about it will make it happen. You know the box I'm talking about. I do. It's the one where they use the Jewish word for, for yep. or the Hebrew word for demon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one you can buy online and open on your YouTube <sighs> channel if you're a dumbass. I've seen I'm several of it. those. <laughs> well, and if you mock it, like, bad shit will happen even if you don't own it. So I'm oh, like, mm -hmm. yes. nope, I'm just going to believe in that one and leave it alone. <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny you have one about children because I have one about children, too. Uh, Kids mine, are so creepy. Ah. Mine are the water babies. You heard of the water oh, babies? yes. A little in my research, I came upon that. And I was like, what's that? And I was like, ooh. Ooh, excuse me. Um, so the water babies, according to Native American lore, can be found at Massacre Rocks State Park in Idaho and in Utah Lake. Um, the, Idaho <laughs> the Idaho water babies are believed to be the ghosts of young children that starving people in the Shoshone tribe drowned in the river, choosing their death over one of starvation, which is a mercy, you know. But it's said that if you sit at the rocks, you can still hear their cries. While some stories claim that the babies simply drowned, others posit that they adapted, grew gills, and have sworn revenge on the living. Um, either way, they drag you down to your death. Like, you can hear them, and if you try to go out into the water to help them, they just drag you down and drown you, too. Um, now, in Utah, water babies are, bleh, in Utah, water babies are believed to be another type of creature altogether. Um, they're like a dwarf that lived in the lake and mimic the sounds of babies crying to drown unsuspecting people. Um, there are different legends in different places. The commonality seems to be like the luring of drowning, luring and drowning of innocent people. But like, I don't know. To me, anything that makes noise in the water is like a hard no. Oh, for sure. I mean, I don't care if it's like an injured otter or like a you know a screaming baby like i'm out <laughs> i also had heard and i mean this could just be me make some stuff up that uh during times of famine that the water babies would take the children of the tribe yes yeah to save them from the misery of starvation and disease mm. and and stuff yeah and there's, and there's actually a ton of child slash water-based myths or not myths urban legends uh when i was doing research like earlier this week that involves bridges pretty much any uh body of water and children that had been drowned uh varying from a farmer had like you know five kids and once his wife had the sixth, he was like, nope, not doing this. And then, like, threw it into water. And uh, then it 
you know, sought revenge and like all his livestock died and all his crops failed. It's kind of like, well, yeah, well, fuck you for doing that. That's kind of fucked up. Right? You could have pulled out. Yeah. Um, you could have pushed her down the stairs. You could have done a lot before you got to the point of drowning the baby that you couldn't feed. Right. Uh, and then there's there's a one that I think it was like during Civil War era where this chick like knew that the soldiers were coming and so she put her baby like in a basket down by the river and then I think she either killed herself or just fucked off. Um and then you can still hear the baby crying if you drive over the bridge. Ugh. Where was that? I forget where. That's so I think in the South. Seems like something that would happen in the South. Like dead babies and kids, that's for me that's I don't know. Yeah. That's a no go. I don't like yeah, that. that. Yeah, it makes me sad. Aww. Okay, what's your next one? Um, I had almost forgotten. Uh, it's ooh, okay. So this one actually was partially featured on an ep- most recently on an episode of American Horror Stories. I don't know if you if I've gotten you into being able to watch that yet. Yes. Uh, so okay. I watched the first two, which were and so they were great. Um, so this one is the killer in the back seat, like the high beams one. So I've heard several different tellings of this, but it always got me. So uh, my favorite telling was a gal went on a date with a guy and it was like just a really shitty date. Like not, they just didn't quit. And he, uh, like he tried to kiss her and she was like, why would you even think like, no, like we have no. And so then she was driving off and then he saw somebody in the back seat and he was like trying to call her and she was like, Oh my God, this fucking guy. And then he was like trying to like flash his high beams at her. And she was like, this fucking guy, really? And then he like crashed his car with his dying breath. He was like, there's somebody in the back seat. And then like the person popped out and killed her because she had it on play too. Um, (laughs) But there's, you know, there's several, several different tellings of it. That's definitely obviously not the very first one that I had heard. Um, But that one always got me too in the whole collection of like, of fears, you know, of like, there's somebody in the back seat. And you know what, dude? Whenever I door dash or like get into my car at night, I still always check the back seat before oh, I get in. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I'll even do a full walk around the car. If yeah, I'm- your car is bigger than mine. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's it's funny because I saw something one day on TikTok where it was like things women do that men don't realize we have to do, and checking the back seat was one of them. Mm-hmm. And um, like it's it. I think this one is like legit one of those allegories for like yeah it really happens but it's not usually an insane killer with a hook for a hand from the local nut house you know it's like (laughs) yeah well and that's definitely so okay i remember like when i was a kid if something happened to a female nine times out of ten the female would get blamed for it no matter how much it wasn't her fault like oh well you didn't check the back seat like oh you didn't go through this gigantic checklist of shit before you got in your car or before you went out or well why did you park in the parking garage like well yeah. motherfucker because there's no street park you know like just shit like that where like because that's where cars nine go. times out of ten no matter how much it wasn't their fault females would still get blamed for all this shit that happened to them and so yeah like females had to collect this mental checklist because oh. like fuck us for having a car right a guy could possibly get into and slit our throats like really (laughs) fuck that noise man right well and it's like usually usually yeah and even in the story like the chick was being a dumb bitch and and so like she kind of was bringing it on herself for not like listening to the guy who was trying to warn her Uh, right it was like yeah i don't know there no mention of responsibility for like the fucking psycho killer. Oh like, god, poor right. old neon Leon. He just likes to stab. <laughs> in, 
he had a rough childhood <laughs> right fuck you for having stabbable face like right <laughs> oh my god you were there with your like your squishy parts out and i know right? <laughs> how dare i have my neck showing <laughs> i know right oh my god so i guess that'll bring us to another another horrible fucking tale uh that's this one is is slightly real uh cropsy Oh yeah, Cropsy. I almost put that one in there too. Oh man. So I this didn't, one, but I lost it. You, that's fun. I was like, this one might be one she does. <laughs> um, so Cropsy ruined my life because I watched the documentary on it. Um, and there's all that horrifying footage when Geraldo went to the Willowbrook State School for Children in New Jersey and everyone yeah. was being like horribly neglected and abused and like Oh man, it was just awful. So Cropsy um, lurked beneath the abandoned Willowbrook State School for Children. Um, sometimes they said he was an axe murderer or a boogeyman, but um, bottom line, he was a murderous creeper hunting for lost children. Um, that was in New Jersey? Yes, in New Jersey. Um, so unfortunately, this one was based on a real guy. Uh, his name was Andre Rand, and he worked as a janitor at the Willowbrook State School before it shut down in 1987. Um, after that, he just sort of squatted on the grounds of the school, and they suspect that he was responsible for several disappearances of the children there, um, though it was never technically proven to be true. Like, while he worked there? Um, yes. Uh, at so some say yes some say no some say before some say after i feel like he's like a. what they accuse him of doing is something he probably would have been doing his whole life uh so uh he was found guilty of kidnapping in 1988 and again in 2004 uh, and it talks about it a lot in the documentary cropsy that is uh you can get it streaming <coughs> um it's super disturbing it is super disturbing um but uh it's was he a child murderer potentially uh was he like definitely a creepy weirdo yes uh maybe some of the stories got blown out of proportion you know maybe he was maybe maybe you know like just naturally being around him gave you the heebie-jeebies because your your animal senses you know like your lizard brain was like danger predator um because that dude he legit did kidnap people and hurt them i think they lived i'm not 100 percent sure i didn't actually look into that which i should have and part of me was like just rewatch cropsy for this the other part of me was like never <laughs> watch cropsy again <laughs> well and the, the thing about cropsy is it takes so many of the boxes for urban legends so there's kids in a place that kids are not supposed to be probably drinking one of them strays from the pack or gets led from the pack and murder. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much the basis of like so many different urban legends, because you have to think like at the, at the core, as humans, we invent myths, tales, urban legends to keep each other safe Absolutely. in one way or another, but also to entertain. But the best way to learn is to entertain it. And so, you know, the house on the corner where the people kind of act sus. Yeah, you're going to make up that a witch lives there because you don't want your kid to get diddled. Yeah. Um, you're <laughs> yeah. going to make up stories about Lover's Lane because you don't want your daughter coming home with, you know, with child. Yeah. Or, you know, your son to be, like, getting STIs from <laughs> random people. Or, you know, it's so oh, yeah. they make up all of these legends to stay safe. And it's it's so crazy when there is um, something that's so based in reality that also just ticks so many fucking boxes. Totally. And that's Cropsy to a T. It's oh, un- for sure. Ooh, it's unsettling. <laughs> so, yeah, if you have a chance to, if anybody is more more is, is if anybody is so inclined to find out more about cropsy it's streaming you can find oh yeah it. there's tons it's very yeah it's very popular dude so okay this one 
I think I heard this one at girls camp and this brought the height of urban legend, scary stories to a whole new level for me. Ooh. So, uh, and we're doing good on time so we can add in like so many more than five right now. Cause this is actually the fifth one. Uh, um, oh, wow. yeah, I know. But luckily both of us, um, probably grew up hearing so many of these so we'll just keep on spitting them out until we lose win uh so (laughs) this one is and i didn't know that my friend didn't make this one up until pretty fucking recently um it's did you ever hear the one that humans can lick too (gasps) oh my god i almost did this one yeah the hand so exactly so the basis the way that I had heard it, and maybe she did make this part up, was that there was a girl and she was blind and she had like a sleepover, but it didn't go well. And so she just like went to her room and she cried and just hung out with her dog. And she thought she heard some sounds like downstairs, but the dog didn't seem too frightened. And she like stuck her hand down and the dog licked her hand and it was whatever. And this happened a couple more times throughout the night. And then she got up to, like, get a glass of water or something. And at the base of the, sh- the stairs, she stepped in something that was kind of wet and squishy and warm. And she was like, that's weird. Like, my dog doesn't have accidents. And she kind of went to smell it. And it s- didn't smell like pee. It smelled kind of coppery. And she was like, what the fuck? Went down and got the water and came back up. And her dog was still, like, chilling under her bed. And then she woke up and there was like alarms and sirens and shit going on. And she was like, what the fuck? And there was all these cops everywhere. And once they saw like her, essentially, they were like, yo, we got to get you out. She was like, what's going on? And apparently right above her bed, scrawled in blood, was humans can like too. And so I hadn't heard that particular telling before. Well, okay, that was, like, the only telling I've heard, and I haven't heard it since, but there's also the one of, like, you know, the chick in college, and she goes in uh, after a long night. She's just going to gather some things and go stay at her boyfriend's house, and her roommate is getting it on, and she was like, that's kind of fucking inconsiderate, because it's, like, dorm room, you know, like, one bed there, one bed there. She's like, that's kind of fucking inconsiderate. Whatever, Cindy, fuck you. <laughs> and she's like, gets her shit and leaves and then comes back after class. And above the bed is scrawled, uh, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the lights? Because like she didn't turn the lights on to gather her shit. So there's several variations of that. But yeah, it's, I think that that one is the one that, it hit hard when I was uh, out. I think I was like eight or nine. I was like, oh man, like the killer could just be there, you know? Oh yeah. That would be no. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, chilling in your periphery. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, and the one, the way I heard it was there was a, a woman who came home after a long day and she found her door unlocked, but she didn't think anything of it. And so, uh, like, yeah, the dog. She sticks her hand down, like she she goes to bed. She doesn't bother to check on the dog, um, and she's like, "Oh wait, the dog must be under the bed." Sticks her hand down, feels the dog lick her hand a couple times. Wakes up in the morning, and the dog is like, you know, gutted like a deer over the bed, dripping blood on her. And someone has written, "Humans can lick too." Yeah, they're like, oh, that one's way worse than anything. Yuck! Oh my gosh, have you heard of the Bunny Man? Yes! <laughs> and that's how the band Echo and the Bunny Men get their name. Oh, no way! I yeah, for sure. That. That's really cool. I had no idea. Um, so, yeah, this one started, I mean, it started around 1900s. 1904, I think, is when. Oh, I didn't know it was that far back. I think that's when they claim that uh, there were some escaped mental patients um, or an escape, escaped mental patient that uh let's see let's see um in 1904 a bus crashed while transferring patients from an asylum in virginia the patients escaped and all but one were eventually recaptured shortly after the bus breakdown dead bunnies started appearing around the area many hanging from the fairfax station bridge 
Um, so obviously this part can't be true because there was no asylum in Fairfax County in 1904. Um, but what is true is that in 1970, a pair of mysterious and scary incidents happened in the area involving a man dressed in a bunny suit. Um, a young couple was taking a nighttime drive when a man dressed in a white bunny suit hurled an axe at their car. Like this is documented, um, shattering their back window. Neither of them was hurt. But two weeks later, um, a man discovered an axe wielding guy in a bunny suit chopping up a porch on a recently built house that was vacant. Um, and he was gone before the police arrived. Uh, and the real bunny man was never apprehended. Um, but they have renamed Fairfax Station Bridge the Bunny Man Bridge. Um, just like in the local vernacular because that's where he would hang the bunnies from supposedly. So this one's a, a little mixture of real and fake, kind of like Cropsy. Uh, you know, they, they saw some shit they couldn't explain and so they came up with this escaped mental patient idea. I think it's far scarier that there is no escaped mental patient and that someone living among them in the community is just like putting on a bunny outfit and hacking up shit but also that could be like a fun way to be an anarchist <laughs> yeah i suppose or if you're a really big fan of johnny darko how to show your yeah fan girl age <laughs> um actually going on the the same theme of escaped mental patients the hook on the door that was i yes. think one of the first urban legends i ever heard yes hook on and the door <laughs> buddy knock it off my dog is going crazy there's a dog in heat oh <laughs> yeah oh buddy yeah you're so. not gonna get to her dude <laughs> he's yeah seriously though and then i take him out to go potty and he doesn't go potty he just walks around licking the grass and i'm like bro <laughs> mm. So if if you guys hear any whining, that's the haps. That's poor. And he's like eight. And so we don't at this point, it's like, OK, like it's super annoying when it happens, but I'm not going to take him in to get neutered at like eight because, <laughs> uh, you know, old dogs and anesthesia exactly. sometimes don't mix. I'll just deal with, you know, the month, a year that <laughs> insufferable <laughs> at least I mean um, I guess at least he's not a female dog so he doesn't have to wear the little the little tampon pad diaper if so he was a female dog I probably would have gotten him fixed it was just he wasn't it, he wasn't like this as bad before like when he was a pup and so it was just like oh okay like whatever you know I, I don't need to get him fixed oh, um, old man yeah, it's gross. <laughs> it's super gross. He's really... Yeah. Yeah. He's Trotter a whole shirt. thing. I did get Trotter fixed when he was, like, very, very brand new. I mean, I got him when he was, like, three months old, and I fixed him right away. But he uh, he used to get old man doggy boners, which was weird, because he never got him, like, when he was younger, so... Yeah, Buddy's, buddy's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... So the the hook on the door for me kind of goes hand in goes hook in hand <laughs> <laughs> or segues into the one where there's two people and they're you know either at lovers lane or they're on a drive and the car breaks down and the guy goes for help and there's you know the bulletin over the radio that says that there's an escaped lunatic and then eventually like she starts hearing either scratching on the roof of the car or dripping and then the cops eventually find her and they say okay don't look back don't look back and then she looks back and her boyfriend was like hanging there the whole time <laughs> and and that kind of goes along with also the whole thing of like the near brush with that where like killers are everywhere so fucking watch out you know well and you know hearkening back to our lead our lead crime hypothesis they were everywhere in the 70s and 80s urban legends are so different now like slender man um, yeah siren head. siren head yeah <laughs> yeah I was say, head. what do our kids worry about yeah 
Huggy Wuggy. Huggy Wuggy. Damn. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, my fifth one is a classic. She's the she's the she's the OG. It's Miss Bloody Mary. <laughs> oh shit, dude! This one fucking scared me to the bone. Yeah, uh, I never fucked with Bloody Mary when I was a kid. No, uh-uh. was, oh, well, because I watched Candyman, and that just reinforced the whole "you don't fuck around in a bathroom" thing. Um, oh, for sure. And I was, yeah, that was one I was going to talk about too, with the um, killers coming through the, um, through the medicine cabinet in the bathroom, and how a yes. lot of people, it's like, and now when I see people on TikTok who are like, and it's always in New York where they like live in a, a tiny apartment in New York, and they're like, it's so weird. I feel a breeze, and it's winter, and I'm fucking freezing, and they go in, and they find that their, that their medicine cabinet is just sort of hastily placed in this hole in the wall. I, there's one that went viral and there's a whole other fucking apartment behind it yes there was one where yeah where she yep. climbed through and it was just like storage and stuff and it was super creepy oh. i yeah. actually since we have the time i was gonna put candy man in there too yeah candy man candy man i uh i have done a weird amount of research about candy man for no reason other than hyperfixation <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, Dude, Bloody, so Mary, Bloody Mary has like so many different origin stories too, which is so interesting. And they all kind of date back to this, like the witch trials. You know, it's like, oh, a witch lives in a bog and she eats kids or she kills kids or you know whatever. It's some some variation of that. The the you know the child hunting witch. And if you stand in the mirror and you say Bloody Mary three times, she'll either appear behind you and scare the fuck out of you. Or she will appear behind you and kill you. Or she will appear behind you and crawl out of the mirror and then kill you. Um, I have I have never... I mean, I'm like... I, I turn 41. By the time this episode comes out, I will be 41. Because I turned 41 over the weekend. And I have never had the guts to do Bloody Mary. Like I never would. I, so, because what's your fucking end game? Is the <laughs> right? You know? I mean, like prove to myself it's not real i can do that by just sitting here and saying it's not real i don't i'm not yeah mm, mm, i just can't with that one it's a little too yeah cool. like oh man, no i get that dude and candy man remember remember watching him in the movie open his mouth and the bees oh my god Ooh. yeah so well, okay so i i liked candy man when i was a kid because like I don't know, the dude who plays Candyman is super fucking handsome. He's got that super deep voice. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to show up for that. <laughs> so I, I I still haven't seen the reboot. Like, I keep intending to, and Me I'm too. going to. Me too. Probably by the time this airs, I will have. Oh. Um, because I just, I really, man, Candyman was one of those, it got inside my fucking head. Yeah. He was like a super handsome Bloody Mary. But do you know that that actually, that murder, okay, that legend was somewhat based in truth. Did you know that? I knew, I had heard that, but I don't know it. I'd like, I would love to hear more. Okay, so, um, and keep in mind, I'm terrible at knowing dates, names, and places, so that doesn't help any. <laughs> um states names places facts you know <laughs> all the all the important shit like i i know it like i can pick it out on multiple choice but uh i cannot organically remember so anyway no like this gal in those projects was killed by somebody who did come through her medicine cabinet she was shot uh twice i believe and so to, by all accounts, this lady was somebody who would, like, yell at traffic and, like, you know, call the cops because her shoes changed color. Like, you know, she, by all accounts, she had some mental health issues anyway. And so she called the cops multiple times and said somebody was trying to come through her medicine cabinet and kill her. And they were like, yeah, okay. And then... There was a couple of shots fired, and I want to say it wasn't until, like, two fucking days later that eventually, 
And like the neighbors had called the cops and everything. And I'm like, hey, so there was like some shots fired next door. And yeah, like a couple fucking days later, at the behest of like, I think either her family members or neighbors or something like that, the landlord finally went in and found her dead. Oh my and God. yeah, no, sure enough, somebody had burrowed. Because I mean, the walls were fairly thin. And as you've seen on like TikTok, a lot of the times the medicine cabinets are just held on by like nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's unsettling. New York really yeah. is terrifying. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that that part actually was based in truth. Oh my god, that's that's so scary. Like, just the idea. I don't know, because I was always really comforted. Okay, I've always been really comforted because I'm a city person. Like, the idea of living in a house in the middle of nowhere is so much scarier to me than the idea of living in the city in like i completely agree right because like you're surrounded by people that could one yes they could be your murderer but two they could keep you from being murdered because you live in a like highly populated area and um you know like there's just if something bad happens and you live alone there's a better chance that someone will find you quicker than if you live in the middle of fucking nowhere and you get like milk delivered twice a year or whatever you know what i mean like I don't know. Turns out it depends on uh, the time period in which you're alive and your socioeconomic standing and uh, most of all, the color of your skin. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. It's if the Dahmer documentary uh, really reinforced anything, it's all of that. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, super fucked up, man. So yeah, especially in like the in the all the time, frankly, yeah. but Dude. very, very much so like the 90s and before. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Not to say it doesn't still exist because it, ab- oh, yes, it absolutely does. But uh, especially back then, they were like, oh, you're black? Oh, well, you can figure it out. Yeah. No big deal. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, so what? Oh and then they God. wonder, oh, why is there this this cultural distrust of the police? Gee, I <laughs> wonder. Yeah, I wonder why. I fucking yeah. wonder why. Ah, <laughs> oh my God. I, figure. We, dude, we were standing outside of Hindsight. Um, we're standing like in the back in the parking lot where Stakeadelphia has like their parking and stuff at the last writers group. And we were talking about the Dahmer documentary because Chuck was like, yeah, I'm going to go home and watch a bit of it and then, you know, pass out and fly to Italy tomorrow. And he he said something that like really reinforced for me. And he was just being flippant. He was like, he was like, you know, I'm really not happy with the new Dahmer series because like they really didn't capture how handsome he really was. Like he was a good looking guy. I disagree. And I and I started laughing. I was like, oh, you're not an Evan Peters guy. He was like, yeah, no, no. Dahmer was super handsome. And it got me thinking about like okay that's just like a that's just like an off the cuff take right so i looked at some of his stuff now is this the ted bundy thing where he's just not repulsive so like they immediately think he's people think he's handsome i find wispy mustaches so extremely (laughs) off-putting um Seriously, every single thing that Dahmer is, every part of his face, I find so extremely off-putting individually. And if you put them all on one person and name them Jeffrey, the chances of me coming anywhere near them willingly (laughs) goes down to zero. Um, You can name them Jeffrey or Rodney, and I will not. (laughs) It's just he was a lanky, wispy, mustached white guy. Which I just, it opposite of does it for me. Yeah. Complete boner killer. And okay, so all of this shit that Dahmer was doing and just kept just kept getting away, not even like eluding police or slipping through their fingers or, oh, just missed him by a minute. Like, no, dude, they had so many people being like, hey, so this weirdo over here with Manson lamps, He's, like, pretty obviously killing people. I can literally hear it and smell the decaying bodies. And they were like, yeah, we'll send someone over. And Right? Yeah. And and then they just wouldn't. 
And then they were like, "Oh, you're a wispy mustache blonde white guy. You seem to you seem to have it figured out. It's good." Well, and it's like with Ted Bundy. Okay, Ted Bundy was killing women. You know, Jeffrey Dahmer was killing men of color. I mean, predominantly. Well, predominantly, that was the mo. Um, so when you talk about them now, here are these white men who did these horrific things that are like often referred to as being handsome, despite their ghoulish tendencies. But like, they they let Ted Bundy be his own lawyer. They let him go into a like a second floor library to have like a lunch break by himself, and he jumped out the fucking window because he wasn't even in fucking prisoner garb. So, he also was a really good lawyer, though. Like he uh, had like a law background. I mean, debatably, he was like a white guy in the the time when being a white guy with some big words was better than not. In the I being mean, a white guy with big words is always better than not. But yeah, the main point is like he was um he was very articulate. Well, he was and, articulate and he was smart, but and his, he was very Republican. Yes, he was very Republican, but his um I mean. You, Okay, the o- I will say the only thing that kept him from being a great lawyer was his his narcissism. He wasn't I would a say his temper. Well, it, that comes with being a narcissist. Yeah, people yeah. Would challenge him on things he had done or or said things that didn't agree with him, you know, or insi- that insinuated that maybe he wasn't the best Republican he could be or whatever, and he would like freak out. Yeah, like being like an insane narcissist and like murderer for sure. But like, I don't know. It's just so strange to hear people just be like. Yeah, they were so handsome. Like Zach Efron played Ted Bundy. Zach Efron. Okay. Here's like- my disconnect with Bundy, and there are two, and only two. Okay. A his unibrow. <laughs> right? Zach Efron did not rep the unibrow. No, no, no. Just a general. These like this is why Bundy was not attractive to me. First of all, his unibrow. Second of all, he's one of those guys that you look at him and you have a mental image of what is a mental, I guess, maybe an oral image, an audio image of what his voice is going to sound like. Yeah. And then he speaks and it's like, oh, your voice is far higher than I thought it would be, which I guess people probably get with me because they look at me and they're like, oh, you're a girl. And I'm like, hey, I'm Megan. So like... (laughs) I kind of have the Dr. Girlfriend thing going on, like the opposite of Ted Bundy. But yeah, like it's, I don't know, man. That's always a little unsettling to me when I look at someone and I'm like, you're going to have like a normal voice. And then their voice is really, really high. Yeah. No, totally. For me with Bundy, it's like he can't. I have a real familiar, I have a familiarity with people who can only keep the mask on for so long. You know what I mean? Yes. And he could only maintain it for so long. And you can see it start to slip pretty, pretty early in some conversations. And I feel like to those of us that know the the signs, the big red flags of like, this person is pretending to be a human with feelings. It starts in the eyes. It does. It starts in the eyes and then it slides. It slips down to the mouth. And then before you know it, you're getting beat to death with a, with a, I mean, whatever's close by. So like, he definitely gives off those vibes. Dahmer was so sad. He was Zach. He was, if a wispy mustache was a person. Exactly. He was a wispy mustache personified. He was like a sad sack alcoholic who, and, and people, this is what I, this is what I fucking hate. So Dahmer went Christian while he was in jail. Right. And like, they even romanticize his death. He let himself be beat to death by this black man because he knew um, he knew that he had to atone for his sins. Oh, that's not how I took it at all. Oh, that's, like, that's how I, I've seen it reported. Okay, so here's one of my friends who had seen it who posted something on Facebook about, like, I don't like how they made Jeffrey Dahmer seem like a sympathetic character. I was like, what's sympathetic about it? I think that maybe, like, I just already don't like him so much that nothing could make me like him. Yeah. And so I was like, what's sympathetic about him? He was, like, a really gross predator 
Yeah. Who was the lowest form of human? Like, what, what's what's sympathetic about that? And like, I think that he just flat out knew that that was a fight he wouldn't fucking win. Like, okay, yeah. throughout he had always like he was like, I you know I want to die. I deserve the electric chair. Like, I you know what I mean? Like, I think that that was just his out. He obviously wanted to fucking die. Like, regardless of his religious affiliation. Yeah. He knew he had done some bad shit and that he couldn't control himself. And I just, I don't know. The dude who killed him was a lot bigger than he was. Yeah. And so at that point, it was a pretty obvious setup. You know, like the guards very obviously looked the other way. Yeah. So he knew the deal. Yeah. He knew this dude is going to fucking kill me. Like, what's the point of fighting back? And people like that. Okay, there's a reason that he drugged his victims. And I I don't honestly wholeheartedly feel like it was because he didn't want them to feel pain. I think that he was ambivalent. Like, either way, he didn't really care about the pain. He just knew that he had to incapacitate his victims in order to be able to do the things he wanted to do. You know, and I think it's a really natural segue to go from talking about urban legends to talking about serial killers because... Urban legends exist because serial killers exist. They exist uh-huh. because scary people are out there. And so, I mean, Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer are are real life fucking boogeyman monsters that did things that even the boogeyman monsters didn't do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Albert Fish. Like, there's there's so many different terrible real life boogeyman and boogie people um who did far worse than any story could ever make up and so we as humans had created these as kind of small inoculations against that you know exactly we have no power in being able to control what other people do um but we can control how m- much we're willing to put ourselves in those situations yeah, our awareness, our situational awareness, you know. Yeah, women raised in the 80s and 90s like us, I think we have all the all the skills needed to survive in a world that doesn't exist anymore in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they trained us to fight the killers of the, <laughs> of the 70s and 80s. And the new predators are very, very well equipped with technology. Yeah, they'll I- just steal your identity. <laughs> As they are trying to do to me. Well, joke's on you. I don't have any fucking money. I have not got my... I haven't gotten my book advance yet. So um, you probably should have waited till then to steal my identity. God damn it. They're trying... Here's the fucked part. Discover card. And then like this other card uh, that I had... This other card company I had never heard of. That's who's giving this person credit cards in my name. <laughs> and so i'm getting stuff i'm getting cra- but this person is not smart enough to change my address right <laughs> i know so they're getting credit cards in my name and then i'm getting the credit cards and it's like well that defeats the whole purpose because now i physically have the card and the card with, number actually with discovery you can get the card number on the app god damn it okay. i have a discovery well that's good to know I locked, I finally, yesterday, I went in and locked down, froze my credit with all three of the credit bureaus, just locked everything down um, because, you know, yeah, like I was able to call and talk to the companies, but that's still like hard inquiries on my credit report. So my credit score is dropping and I don't know, those are like first world problems, but (laughs) yeah, I don't, just like, dude you think I'm not already getting credit cards in my name and maxing them out immediately? <laughs> like this is not <laughs> fraudulent behavior that is being flagged by the credit card companies. Cause this is my MO in general, like fuck. And they're trying to reset all the passwords on all my email accounts. That's, that's, fucked up. that's what pisses me off the most. Cause I can't remember them. So I have like <laughs> everything. <laughs> Just like, Same. God damn it. Well, I think that was a good breakdown of all our favorite urban oh, legends. Did we? Wait, I got one, one more. I got one yes. more. I didn't do my bonus one. Okay, so this one's not spooky, okay. but it is a really interesting urban legend that's probably one of my favorites. So, in this one, um, I don't know if you've heard about this. There's actually, oddly enough, a whole uh, 
like docu series, not docu series, a whole documentary about it. That's fun to watch, but it's obviously not true. Um, that Paul McCartney died in 1966 <laughs> in a car accident. That like partially it like decapitated him like above the eyebrows. I don't know if that's full decapitation. It cut his head off above the eyebrows. Okay, and so. But at that point, the Beatles were, like, such a fucking phenomenon. And, like, at, like Beatles mania was a real thing, you know? And so, apparently, according to this legend... Um, okay, like, you know the cover of Abbey Road where they're all, like, walking down the street? Yeah. Uh, one of the cars, the license plate reads 28 if, because he would have been 28 if he was still alive. <laughs> Um, this death and this alleged death in 1966 also coincided with a Beatles lookalike contest. And so they found this guy who looked enough like Paul McCartney, gave him facial reconstructive surgery to look more like Paul McCartney. The original Paul McCartney, I believe, was like left handed and this new guy is right handed or vice versa. Um, God, there was so many other different, like, small things that I was like, I mean, this actually is kind of probable, because, like, they knew that American teenagers, or not American teenagers, English teenagers, American teenagers, too, at that point were the main commodity, and they would go absolute ape shit if their idol, Paul McCartney, died. Like, <laughs> I don't know what they thought they would do if they thought they would strike. I mean, they're 16. Who fucking cares? <laughs> It. Oh, you're not going to do your arithmetic. Bad yeah. on you. Yeah, it's not like they're uh, still working in the mines or making watches or whatever. Right? <laughs> and so, yeah, there's so many conspiracy theories based around Paul McCartney died in 1966. Even uh, the song A Day in the Life, he blew his mind out in a car. He didn't notice that the lights had changed. Um, like there's, uh, oh, I Am the Walrus. The walrus, and keep in mind, this is what they say. I have done no independent research on this. The walrus is supposed to represent death. Um, and then looking through the glass onion, glass onion, uh, they said something about the walrus is Paul. That's some, and that, once again, I acknowledge that this is some hotep ass shit. The, and so that's supposed to imply that they're in on it. Um, even. Uh, Maxwell Silver Hammer. Apparently, there was this fixer named Maxwell, and they uh, he had killed a lady who knew about it, or something to that effect. And he was like a fixer that was more or less a threat that if any of them came out with any of this, that they would get like the, the hammer and they would just be replaced. <laughs> oh um, yeah. Shit. Yeah. And so the Beatles had to like sneak uh, hints out through their lyrics and allegedly, according to this documentary that I had watched uh, 10 plus years ago, um, on his deathbed, George Harrison had allegedly recorded the audio for this movie, despite the fact that this was obviously an American person trying to do a Liverpool accent <laughs> with varying degrees of success at times. <laughs> Dude, this has to tie for my favorites. Uh, my my <laughs> favorites that Avril Lavigne is not. Avril Lavigne, like okay, I always wondered about that. Like, what's their end game? She wasn't even that big. No, she was big. exactly. So yeah, so I I love that one. That like at some point she died and someone else took over. But my like, number why? one, I I know, right? I don't know. I don't even have the I don't even have the evidence to back it up. But my favorite is that, I, I've heard that before though. Oh, okay, yeah. My favorite is that Leah Michelle can't read or write. That's my favorite. Leah Michelle. Uh, the chick from Glee who played Rachel. Um, oh, yeah. She can't read or write. Yeah. Well, good and, for her. No, there's like all of this. Supposed good for her making it that far. Well, and some of it, I mean, it is it is very funny. So she's like a super diva. She has bad attitudes about her coworkers. And she's just kind of like 
has dedicated her whole life to becoming famous. And so the theory is that she never had time to go to school and her parents were like crazy stage parents. And so they never taught her to read or write. Um, and so she learns her lines by having someone read them to her. Um, and then she, uh, <laughs> she has, she has little ways around like she can't sign her own name so at book signing she just does like scribbles and all this stuff it's so yeah that's what i do if you see my signature it's a wiggle <laughs> i know what to um but yeah it's just so funny if you google leah michelle can't read or write or leah michelle illiterate there's i actually hope that that's true like what if she just has really bad dyslexia and she's just found so many workarounds you know i think that's more probable but she kind of that's, that's kind of impressive dude <laughs> right she has addressed it a little bit herself but she's never fully debunked it oh um, i'd lean into it i which i like that she's leading into it because she was kind of traditionally i could get her so many like spokespersonships and like she could be like an ambassador for oh yeah like the illiterate my, dude, I, my uncle is illiterate you know, and there's nothing wrong with being illiterate. If you're illiterate, you just, you know, you there isn't. But it's funny because there's so many YouTube videos and TikToks and Instagram reels with all this evidence for why she's illiterate. It just blows my mind. It's my favorite. It's my favorite celebrity so, urban legend. Okay, I'm hyper fixated on the Avril Levine thing because that would be like saying Dave Coulier was replaced in 2003. It's like, well, the stakes were pretty low then. Like yeah. mid full house, okay, I can kind of get it. But <laughs> why? Why would anyone replace Avril Lavigne? She's not Madonna. Oh, that's funny. So, um, <sighs> you're giving it a Google right now, huh? Yes. Uh, Good. She, they say she was replaced by a lookalike named Melissa in 2003. Okay, um, so yeah, the stakes were low in 2003 for Avril Lavigne, if I recall. And then this chick who replaced her went on to marry Chad Kroger, which is like the worst, yeah. the worst. Yeah. Oh, here's that's the, yeah. Here's the Paul McCartney. Um, and so at some point, the real Levine is said to have died. So the record company replaced her with Melissa full time. Proof has included her red carpet shots where she's wearing trousers, but Melissa prefers dresses and skirts. And suppose the difference between the facial features of pre two thousand Levine. I mean, I think it's more likely she had plastic surgery. What but. if they just replaced her with Anna Paquin and nobody said anything? <laughs> <laughs> right? She was she was sucky. Um, but yeah, so it's there was even a publicity shot in which Levine had Melissa written on her hand and has songs. The day the the day you slipped away was the day I found it won't be the same. Um I guess that's an example of like her. Or it could have been written about an ex, but like yeah yeah oh do you know that my friend jeremy was the skater boy in the video skater boy no way yeah oh my god that's awesome he lives in portland yeah wow and yeah. actually he's another one where like looking at him you kind of think that he would have a high voice and then he sounds like this and it's like oh didn't expect that that was a pleasant surprise he looks like Jesse Pinkman and has like this gravelly voice. <laughs> oh my gosh. My friend from school, my friend, um, oh God, I don't even remember her name now. Uh, Crystal, Crystal Sutton, her brother Nick was in Gummo. He was crazy. Like, yeah, he wasn't Gummo. He was like the regular sized kid or whatever. Huh. So, yeah. I know I'm like adjacent. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very uh, adjacent to, but I'm I'm not a fame. I'm not I'm not a tiny fame guy. I just know <laughs> Dude, I I see, I see what Chuck goes through. I see what Chelsea Kane goes through with people. Um, and I don't want to be I don't want to be that kind of famous. I don't I don't think I can handle it. Like he was talking about, it would go to my head immediately. Well, see, that's another problem, too. I would start getting real weird about it. I'd start, like, I'd start, like, planting rumors that I had died and was being replaced by someone else. <laughs> and they'd be like, you're not famous enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd start getting real weird. I'd get, like, um, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I wouldn't turn into a cat like Dennis's 
ex-wife Maureen Ponderosa on It's Always Sunny, but I might get some weird so I would get some weird plastic surgery that no one would be able to notice but me, where I'd get like one of my two face moles removed and they'd be like, Well, that was dumb, and I'd be like, I feel complete now. I only have one face mole. <laughs> no, I'd don't get it removed, get it like move move it over an inch or something <laughs> move it so it perfectly <laughs> so i always talk about how jason schwartzman is my cosmic mole twin uh because he and i have the same mole like on our faces um but i'll just get mine like darkened and lined up perfectly with his so that like when we meet we can just put our moles together <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dope and then we can like activate some weird portal in the universe that like allows people to time travel and cure cancer that sounds rad i think it might be cool i mean or he'll Thanks just for like, taking one for the team right you're welcome i mean it's what i was born to do <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you'll bring back the original avril Levine. maybe that's what's needed <laughs> dude what if we touch moles and then all of a sudden the black plague is like just rampant everywhere and yeah the, the original avril Levine comes back and yeah that would what be if it's like something that's even lower stakes like you guys touch <laughs> moles and like dana plato's alive now oh my god you know what i mean like like something that's just like a random or or like like, gary coleman's tall and alive gary yeah or pluots don't exist anymore like yeah (laughs) link out of existence that would be crazy but we have a new apple (laughs) right we have a new apple that's tastier this is why i have to get famous and why i should never get famous because i would go mad (laughs) scientist with it and you'd remove all pluots so, I would yeah, move. but in I do like a Jennifer Lopez hack where instead of just blinking them out of existence, I would in, I would insist people start calling them by a new name. Where like she doesn't lose weight, she just has people change out the the size tags on her clothes. Is that true? That's true. She does. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't need to lose weight. No, nope, she's perfect. But she, she looks. She's always looked fine the way she was. Yeah. But that's just an interesting thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I never know what pants size I am anyway, because, like, depending on the brand, I'm either an 18 or an 8. Right? See, I want to <laughs> bring back the hot brew, the, like, where your where your pants size is, like, a medium or large, but your top half is, like, a triple a XL. <laughs> yeah. That's the body type that runs in my family. Yeah, I call it the SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> yes. The Gru is a lot more accurate. You were the one who dropped the hot Gru summer. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, we're going to have a hot Gru summer. And I laughed until I fucking started to joke a little bit. It was so, funny. <laughs> so I just stole it and gave it back to you. <laughs> See, I'm only funny when you repeat my words back to me. And then I'm like, that's super funny, Aaron. That was, funny. <laughs> that was super funny. I'm like, yeah, I'm a Gru. I totally agree. I don't have the Gru We're the Gru crew. But yeah, we're the Gru crew. <laughs> I'm, I'm headed for the Gru, for the Gru butt, where it's just like disappearing. Yeah, I have a Hank Hill butt. It runs in my family. I have My a- entire family is built like Hank Hill. <laughs> regardless <laughs> of gender. Yeah. Yeah. My pants are a size zero. My shirts are three X. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. That's how we're rolling. Hell next yeah. week, next week, guys, join us. Um, we're gonna do our sp- our favorite uh, spooky ghost stories. Spooky tales exciting. of the supernatural. This is our jam with your with your ghost stories too, and we'll put them up. Yes, yes, it'll be good. Um, I've updated the show notes. I will continue to update the show notes as as needed. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think that's it for this week circumstances led us to zoom um but we'll probably be in person next week probably we ought to be yeah we should be um that was so- weird i burped and talked at the same time <laughs> came out as more of a ribbit <laughs> let's see what interesting celebrity uh conspiracies we have and what new noises we can make it'll be fun <laughs> <laughs> i like that that's a good place to end I <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>